All right, guys, welcome back. I think I'm going to call this one Seeing Through the PSYOP because when you got eyes to see and ears to hear, you got to respond, you know. And really, you know, I smell martial law on the horizon. I, I know, and this is why I, I call, I'm calling this one Seeing Through the PSYOP because it, it's a setup. It's a setup in an attempt for the final solution. That's what this is. And so, to help you kind of give you a perspective that's not uncommon, it takes time through this historical, not only are we in a time of historical precedence, but we also have to look into the mimicry of history um, once again, the undermining by the established order to remove the sovereignty of the United States in, an, in, in order for their agenda to create the one world order. But when you get to this place of sanctification, you're outcasted, you're physically on the outside looking in. But spiritually, you're on the inside looking out. So, put yourself in this eternal place, this bigger picture where you're on the outside with, you're on the outside of the established order with the insider's spiritual perspective. And in looking at the setup of what's going on on the streets today, it's looking like the consummation of this age is upon us. And the attempts for the established order to set up a coup or an attempt for a final solution, a.k.a. Uh, you know, a fascist setup, once again, mimic, mimic throughout history, the repeating of this cycle again. And this cycle is, is the constant attempt of trying to perfect each cycle before a lead-up, before a war before a, a, a mass genocide of humanity. This is what the streets are telling me. I'm looking with this insider's perspective from the outside in, of the, into, into this dimension. And you're seeing the color coding. You're seeing the red, white, black. I'm seeing that. And, and um, how are they not in on this? This is the question I have. And, and, and to a greater degree, it doesn't matter if they don't understand. It matters that you and I understand. Um, there's a difference between the fallen watchers and to be a watchman. One is an enemy of God and one is a friend of God. One is a chosen of God. We are the, we are the watchmen of the end times, you and I, the chosen ones. With the insider's perspective coming from the outside and looking at the undermining of this country being done by the established order. And hopefully... Trump can do something sooner than later if he's not fully um, invested into this uh, undermining by the established order. So let's get one thing straight. The established order is not the sovereignty of the United States. The established order is Satanism and all the empty vessels and, and cult and religious constructs and corporate and, 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 and bankster and, and governing body constructs, fabrications of man, the Babylonian pyramid scheme, the repeating of history throughout history, and every time it's repeated, it's done more perfectly because it's picked up the, 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 the wisdom of Solomon um, against that of God's bloodline of Israel to try to perfect itself in a lead-up, another lead-up into a holocaust or a final solution. And what we have is... Frankly, we have the apostates of every cult, you know, the apostates of every religion, um, the worst of humanity, the enemies of God, the enemies of the state, the enemies of the sovereignty of our country, uh, trying to continue in, bla in, bla in stealing Jacob's birthright and keeping it unto Esau, uh, as well as calling good evil and evil good, and right wrong and wrong right. This is the the constant striving of man's effort in his fallen state 
to destroy God's chosen seed, God's chosen bloodline. That's all it is. It's always been done this way. It's just at, at this, at, at this, uh, you know, at this uh, go again, this attempt again is to once again try and to collect the perfect uh, attack measures and collect them throughout history through the cycles in the final consummate, consummation in which God will finally put his foot down. And so divine justice will be meted, meted out upon those who believe social justice has any place in God's kingdom. And it doesn't. So seeing on the streets, you, I, I smell what's coming. It's, 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 is, is Trump going to do something? Is he too far invested into this shadow government? And frankly, some people talk great at Trump. And, I, and I'm, it's not my place to worry about what one man's position can actually do as president. He will do what he believes, but he will also do what he's assigned to do. I myself, you know, I am, I am, I'm a watchman. I don't, I don't, I'm not on the fence and I don't play either side of the Hegelian dialectic. So essentially I'm outside, uh, I'm outside of this, of this space-time continuum. I'm only in the here and now as a watchman for God. And so are you. Your existence is, is proof of that, you know? And their existence, according to your, your insider perspective from the bigger picture, is seeing that um, their attempts to isolate and bring about another uh, scenario in removing, first of all, removing the sovereignty of the United States in an attempt to create this one world government. This is the, the, the setup to the PSYOP. We're seeing through this, because we're living it right now. We're seeing through what's going on. Um, this is a game show. Whoever sees through this game show unto the end, whoever endures this game show unto the end, will be of, of the bride of Christ to um, go into the king's chamber or be invited to the to sit at the wedding feast of the lamb um and once again i kind of want to continue also in this see gang stalkers and i and i know i continued this from the last part which the battery died but i want to continue with this because this is the this is the part that gang stalkers make and, and they don't realize that they're doomed if they if they choose to gang stalk here's why Essentially, once they're caught up, they're they're taken in, they're they're left behind, and or raptured into this gang stalking. Because it, it's see the righteous rulers, you and I will be the righteous rulers of this plane one day. God has already promised us that we'll be ruling it maybe from another dimension, another the eternal dimension. But nonetheless, the rulers are the rulers, and at this point, um, Jacob's birthright is still in the hands of Esau. So, the problem with gang stalkers is um, they never thought about, there was no intellectual um, reasoning behind why they got into it. And really, ultimately, it comes to the fact that Satan has chose them from the beginning to gang stalk. They were born to become gang stalkers. Unfortunately, um, they're in it, and they're in it for life. You know, and, and the only thing that eventually, they can't get out of it. They can't get out of this. No, they can't. Um, if they do, um, they know that they'll become target, targets as well. But not really for the same reason that we become targeted. See, we were targets from the beginning. We were the true chosen, the few. who They were just the called. They were, they were called. God had called them at one point, And by false free will, they chose uh, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Or living a life outside of the Holy Spirit. That's essentially what blasphemy is. The, the, the unredeemable sin, the unpardonable sin, is, is choosing willfully to neglect God and His power of the Holy Spirit throughout one's life. And so, this is the... It, it, it's not... It's too late once they're in, essentially, is what, what's happening on the street. and They can't get out. They're too far indebted to gang stalking. They don't want to become targets... Um, that's that's what will happen. That's the the second that's the second side of the coin. The other side of the coin, and um, they're, they're not. It's, it's 
they've already sold their souls. So once that initiation happens in that realm, they're part of it and they're fixed into it. You know, and so seeing what's happening on the streets, you know, seeing through the PSYOP, it comes to a point where you have to hyper vigilantly put yourself in it as a chosen one. Just get as deep into it as fast as possible, make understanding of it, and then move out of it. Because some, at a point it will become monotonous, it will become, you, you'll have to, and if you deal with it in, in, in the wrong way, it'll just be with you in, the, in, the, in, the, in a false light, in a false sense. So you have to confront it, face it, look at every avenue, look at every turn, see what's going on, be, and, and overcome your hypervigilant nature. Once, you, once you're able to do that, you have an even better perspective on what's going on the PSYOP on the street. You have more control of getting yourself in because you're not one of them. But if you make yourself, if you if you allow God to say, hey God, okay, this is what it is to have eyes to see and ears to hear. These are things that we're seeing. I'm hearing them. I'm seeing them. Um, there's relatability and confirmation through other TI experiences. I'm getting fully involved in this. Um, the sooner the better I can get out. And that's what it is. Is Okay, I get it. You get to a point where you plateau. It's monotonous. I get it. Now, how am I going to reconstruct everything that has come to me through this existence, this, this, this existence of being a chosen to I, alongside um, this abiding wisdom, this faith that I have in God? Um, I've come to this plateau, it's monotonous, and hopefully you can get to the point where it's boring now. It's, it's, it's predictable. And that's where they lose an edge when, when, when you make it too predictable for them. Then... That you're, you keep giving away their sixes, and then they then, then they look like they just look like pawns in the game. Then they then then they know. See the demon attachment, the dimensional demonic attachment that controls them from the other side, their own chosen side, the unchosen dimension, the lower vibrational dimensions. They you okay you you. It's one thing to be controlled by the game, but it's another thing to um, overcome the game overcome the world you know and, and, and a part of being a, a part of being an overcomer is to overcome the game and once you make monotony monotony of it you make boredom of it you make a, a reason of it and you come to a conclusion that it, it's just another part of the bigger picture it's a very small part of the bigger picture then you can begin to apply the measure of, of letting go of the fence and taking that one necessary step away from the fence. We've talked about this, guys. This is seeing through the setup is you're seeing one polar aspect of, of the Hegelian dialectic and you're, and you're seeing the fence that delineates it and you're seeing the other polar aspect. But you're, you're not of any of it. You're not of anything in between from one end to the other. You're, you don't, you're not comprised of that. You're not, you were not born to be of that in the long run. But are you going to make the choice to be the, the, one, the one who's on the outside with the insider perspective? Then you're in full control of yourself. You have your soul. You know, till the end it will be given to you as the crown, the crown of life. You will, you know, your, you, your souls will be gained as, you know, as scripture says, as Christ says, your souls will be gained at, at the end. So yeah, that's the crown of life, I believe. So if it's not, you know. You can tell me otherwise, but until then, I'll continue believing that. And and the thing is, is, is as an overcomer, you have to, in some way, even put yourself, put your true self outside of your false self. Throw your false self into that old equation. That false self. It's important to recognize it for what it is. If if, if it's on your mind, and you find yourself continually being caught up in it, face it. That's the whole premise of. The examination is to face the doubt of who you are um, to create and live by that newer standard. And, and, and a part of that old, that other side of, uh, of the, your, the, you know, the greater realization for the need of, of the person of Jesus Christ in your life is the old self, is the false self. And when it creeps back up to you every once in a while, you give it a good look in the eyes, you face yourself, and you put that old, that old nature into the old paradigm. And that... And, and, and even that, see, and, and then once you have all these things into your bigger picture repertoire, you're going to see the world for what it is. You're going to see it for what it is. You're seeing the chessboard. 
you're seeing the empty vessels with no life in them. They look different than us. Don't get me wrong. They look different. It's because they're, they're driven from a different spiritual source. A demonic, fallen, spiritual source. Now, although you and I are in that fallen flesh, we all are in that fallen flesh, our spiritual source is from on Most High. It's from the eternal, your eternal um, vantage point that God has lifted you up to. Whether you want to consider it vibration, vibrationally, um, resonance, um, higher consciousness. Um, as long as you understand that, when we're able to truly look outside of ourselves at false self and deconstruct the indoctrination that has falsely eluded us to our true selves within, then we can then we can physically be removed from the inside of this kingdom, this, this established order, to the outside of it, and gain the true respect of the inside-out life as compared to the outside-in control mechanism of the setup or the psyop. And once you're here, once you're casted out physically, and you're and then you're spiritually coming from the place of a higher, your spiritual source is that of the Holy Spirit, is that of the eternal, is that of God's holy witness in your life, then you truly are set straight. You're set on the straight and narrow with your vision, with eyes to see and ears to hear. Now you're, you're looking at the polarity of the Hegelian dialectic of this world and how everything within it is for those of the world, even the established church today. And so, even, you know, and this is, and this is, see all these, yes, God does want sovereignty of nations because um, he did it this way from the Tower of Babel, where they tried to erect their own tower and cl proclaim themselves God. Now this, obviously, obviously there's that 10% fallen Kenite spirit slash genetic expression that exists today trying to subvert humanity. Yes, we understand that. And that's why God likes, he wants national sovereignty. But what's one thing we're noticing? He's allowing for, he is allowing for the destruction of this false paradigm. He's allowing for it. We're witnessing that something is happening where he is allowing for it. And their attempts to test us out of this system is also what he's allowing for. So, are you going to blame God for something that he is proving you worthwhile um, in which you were born to have to do anyways in terms of taking this examination personally? Yes, at the end you will thank him. You do, you, And then when you fully get to this true perspective of seeing the, the being the outsider in this carnality but stemming from the spiritual source of the inside out life the light that has been given a vessel light to your vessel in Jesus Christ can you truly be thankful and rejoiceful in what the struggle of the flesh in this carnality is all about so um, there will come that time when as scriptures say um you, you will never be in the mind state again to have to look back. It won't be in your thought to look back into this world once you're up there, once you're truly sanctified. And, and the, the, what's sad is, is the wait and see attitude of, uh, of believers today. That this, this wait and see attitude is a theological draconian measure created by the fallen state of man. This pre trib, this, this, um, historicity of Jesus only without Jesus actually being made alive in your vessel, in your life, to give you presence of here and now and, and, and an eternal construct to be sanctified away from a broken system of the, of the space-time continuum of this carnality, of this temporality. They want your, the mind, they want your mind. If they have your mind, they've essentially scalped your soul, you know? And that's why you see this, this heart, it's a, it's a darkened heart. It's a, it's a truly a void of light. I'm not gonna. I don't like to say, you know. I said darken, but void of light. A heart that's void of light. You know. 
that's what it is. They, the, you know, the Vatican wants to, you know, wants mind control, the temporal control of you. It doesn't care. It knows that if it has temporal control, your soul is destined to uh, be recycled right into the eternal damnation when the final consummation of this age happens. Um, and so that's that's what that's what it is with with seeing through the psyop is. This is the best it will get for gang stalkers ever. This is the best these losers will. And I feel bad. I shouldn't even call them losers. I should be praying for these people. They're they're so lost. They you know that's why Jesus says, "Father, forgive them, for they do not know." You know. This is the best it gets they have for those lost souls. But for us, this is the worst it gets. And trust me, um, it only gets better when you apply what you were chosen to apply and been given the God-given right to apply in order to um, relate to God. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, 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 it's almost unexplainable. Words can't explain relating to the power of the Holy Spirit in one's life. Words can't... The words aren't meant... This is... To even saying words, it's, it's just part of this carnality. It's not... The Spirit is so different. It's, it's the world upside down. It's the world... It's, it's the true religion of God inside out. God making you alive. And so, unfortunately, you and I, we... A way has been provided for us. A way has been made out for us to sanctify us away. And... and, and I'm truly thankful, I, I, and and when you get to this, when you're when you're chosen as a Christian and a believer, and a chosen Ti, you come to this place, this private place of, you know, you're truly thankful to revel in this place because it's. I wouldn't take it back to have it easy in the old in the old with the old self with the false self with the old nature. In the fallen division against God, the fallen blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. I mean, I couldn't imagine that. I couldn't, I don't, it was a long time ago for me, but the hardships have been uh, characteristically proving constantly God has try, been trying to get my attention, just like He constantly tries to get your attention through this, through the examination. Be, 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 first of all, be grateful to enter the examination. It's an, it's an invitation by God. But you have to take it. And it's personal. You have to take, you have to take offense to your false self, you know, when applying it to your, to your existence. You have to take it personal. It's not the cross. Your cross is your own. I can't carry your cross. You can't carry my cross. Yes, um, there's a time in this, Physically and figurative sense, we carry each other's cross. We burden each other's crosses. But the examination is for you to, it's for you personally to apply um, the test of sanctification in carrying your cross, taking that struggle of, of, of having to exist in the flesh and come out on the other end rejoiceful that God has put you through it and that, has, and that he's grown you closer to himself. Nobody can do that for you. Theology can. An established construct ca cannot. Um, it require, God requires your full involvement. Do you want it or do you not want it? I mean, that's it. And so, if you have it, you'll see through the PSYOP. You, this is a setup. But understand that the setup, most were born for it, and few were born to it. Period. I couldn't tell you any other way. Uh, I, 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 there are no cheat codes in this one. There, there's no cheat codes. There's hardship. You know, the easy way is the selling of the soul, but the hardship, there's light at the end of this tunnel. And, it, and, it, and, it, and you'll see it now. You'll presently be awakened to the light of life being, being given through your vessel to bring life to our mortal bodies right now so that we can be awakened to the born again eternal equation that we were always that we were chosen to be of from the beginning you know so if you're here and you're like you're in that complacent mode you're in that complaining mode you're 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 complaining in the wilderness but you're not yet crying out to god in the wilderness then that's what you need to do you need to take that complaints and turn it into crying out to god in the wilderness for everything for every 
every all of your needs, whatever direction, whatever. If you're totally lost, but you know that the complaining is not helping, it's time to start crying out to God. You know, so I hope you're able to get there. You know, be you know, and it does take someone with a testimony. Um, that one last lost sheep is important to the shepherd, the most important, more so than the others in the wilderness. So. Thank you for listening, guys. Um, Godspeed. I love you guys. I'm going to keep praying for you guys. Keep praying for the ministry. Pray for me. Um, don't stop. This life is about purpose and pursuit. Uh, 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 stay present in the here and now, and God will be with you. Don't, don't fall asleep to the space-time continuum. All right, guys. Till the next one. Take care.